Hello and welcome to The Political Brief. I'm Florence Vilmeneau. Coming up in this week's show, Emmanuel Macron's movement La République En Marche elects a new leader. Meanwhile, the 100th Congress of Mayors takes place in Paris. Stephen Carroll will be on set to tell us why so many mayors are up in arms right now. And former presidential candidate François Fillon says goodbye to French politics. Emmanuel Macron pulled off what many thought was impossible. He created his own centrist political movement and only a year later claimed victory in the presidential elections and then a massive majority in parliament. Now that he's president of France, he's had to hand over the reins of his La République En Marche party. But he's not releasing all control. The president chose the man who will replace him, his close ally, Christophe Castaner. France 24's Claire Paquelin was there when Castaner made his first speech as leader at the party's first congress in Lyon. They call him Casta, and he's now leader of Emmanuel Macron's La République en Marche party. Christophe Castaner was hand-picked for the job by the president. He was the only candidate when the party voted at its first ever congress. We've changed the image of France across the world. How can we not be proud? An early supporter of Emmanuel Macron, he impressed the president as government spokesman. And his experience as a town mayor in the south of France is seen as crucial, given the party's next task, gaining a foothold in local politics across France. We will have candidates in every single election to come, and we must win them. We will be present everywhere. Emmanuel Macron's 19-month-old En Marche movement propelled him to the presidency. The campaign machine now needs to be reconfigured for future elections. Let's not mistake ourselves. The European, local, departmental and regional elections may not be for a few years, but they could be won or lost today. Let's get ready for them now. Christophe Castaner's election, given that he was the only candidate, clashed with the image the party has always tried to project as a grassroots bottom-up movement. With the victory days of last spring behind it, Emmanuel Macron's party now needs to ensure its members stay engaged and mobilized. On-the-ground support is crucial for a political party that's still a newcomer. Next, the 100th Congress of Mayors was held in Paris this week. Organized by the Association of French Mayors, the annual Congress is somewhat of an institution. It's essentially a meet and greet for France's 36,000 locally elected leaders who flock to the capital with their tricolor sashes. It's an opportunity for mayors of tiny French villages to brush shoulders with high-profile bigwigs like the mayor of Paris, Anne Hidalgo, and Prime Minister Édouard Philippe. The theme of this year's Congress was Make France Successful Through Its Local Communities, an optimistic theme that was a stark contrast with a gloomy and even angry tone among many mayors. The financial situation of local authorities is disastrous. And now, after 10 years of austerity measures, we are being told it's only going to get worse. This year we have extra duties. We're now in charge of IDs and civil partnerships. But we can't hire people. And yet, we have to keep improving our public service. It's not possible. I'm thinking about selling our public library because we can't afford it anymore. It breaks my heart to tell the head of an organization that helps people find jobs that we have to cut their subsidies. It's very cold in this classroom because we can't close the windows properly anymore. Now, some mayors went so far as to boycott the Congress altogether. To find out more about why so many French mayors are up in arms, we're joined on set by France 24's business editor, Stephen Carroll. Stephen, this has a little something to do with money. It certainly does. Now, local authorities here in France provide a wide range of services, from things like lighting and cleaning services to the likes of maintenance of buildings, but also school transport, canteens in schools. So there's a lot of money involved in this. And the mayors say that thanks to recent cuts, they have been cut to the bone in funding for those services. And this is something that goes back several years. Under the last president, François Hollande, we saw a steady decrease of funding from over 41 billion in 2012 to just under 31 billion 
this year. So it has been a fairly significant decrease in funding from central government uh, for those mayors. Now, going forward, they're facing more cuts as well. We know that the current government has said they want to, those local authorities to limit the increases in their spending to just 1.2% over the next five years. That's significantly less than the current estimates would be. It'll save the state 13 billion euros, but the mayors say that that's going to represent a big loss for them as well. Now, there are other cuts also involved which will affect local services, cuts to subsidised jobs, cuts to housing allowances. The government says what they're trying to do is give the mayors predictability over their funding for the next five years. It's not a funding cut, it's simply limiting increases. Unsurprisingly, the mayors don't agree. And uh, Emmanuel Macron's changes to housing tax is causing further problems as well. This is a tax that's paid both by homeowners and renters in France. And it's one of the few taxes that local authorities and mayors in small villages and towns had control over increasing. So what happened was, as central government funding has been falling in recent years, those taxes have been increasing to balance out the funding gap for those local authorities. But one of Emmanuel Macron's big campaign promises was to exempt 80% of French households from paying the housing tax. That would mean a huge reduction in funding for those authorities. In 52 uh, local authority districts, there'd be no households paying this housing tax. When we look at the big cities in France, just to get an idea of what the funding shortfall will be in Paris, it's over 150 million euros. Uh, in Lyon, just under 80 million euros, and higher again in Marseille, just under 180 million euros. So big gaps for those cities to make up. Now, the state says they will compensate the local authorities for every euro that they lose from this reduction in the housing tax, but the mayors doubt that, and they are concerned that they're going to have to go even further than the cuts they've already made. Thank you so much, Stephen, for clearing up why uh, those mayors are so angry. Now, moving on to a different story, the conservative Les Républicains Party has been reeling ever since its candidate François Fillon bombed out of the first round of the presidential election. The former prime minister has seen a spectacular fall from grace in just a year. Aaron Ogunki has the story. This time last year, François Fillon was the star of France's conservative party, Les Républicains. To much of the party's surprise, he beat former president Nicolas Sarkozy and the popular Alain Juppé in the Republican primaries. It was a victory that many thought would secure his path to the Elysee Palace. But just months later, the so-called Penelope Gate scandal brought his momentum to a screeching halt. In March, French judges placed François Fillon under formal investigation for embezzlement after Le Canard Enchaîné, a satirical weekly, revealed that he paid his wife hundreds of thousands of euros in public money for a reportedly fictitious job. The damage to his political career proved irreversible. Though Fillon refused to drop out of the race, he did not make it to the second round. It was the first time the mainstream right was absent from the second round since 1974. Now, less than a year after his defeat, François Fillon has officially announced his withdrawal from politics. In defeat, a leader must be able to step down without looking for excuses and without lecturing others. It's a rule I've imposed on myself. The former prime minister handed the reins of his newly created political party to Bruno Retailleau, who left little doubt as to the permanence of Fillon's decision. He was cautious not to give any signs that would cause people to interpret any of his future decisions, comments or attitudes as a desire to return to politics. François Fillon has since joined a Paris-based investment firm. And while he has kept a noticeably low profile since the elections, he is unlikely to escape public scrutiny in the future. The embezzlement investigation still hangs over his head. The leader of the far-right National Front Party, Marine Le Pen, is having banking trouble. Britain's biggest bank, HSBC, has closed a bank account she had for 25 years. The move came a day after Société Générale, France's second largest bank, asked the far-right party to close all its accounts, this after a 30-year relationship. At a press conference this week, Marine Le Pen claimed that she and her party were the victims of a, quote, banking fatwa and has vowed to sue both banks for discrimination. Le Pen said the closures were a political decision designed to stop the National Front from taking part in democratic life. The banks, meanwhile, haven't made public their reasons for closing the accounts, though Société Générale did say it wasn't a political move.
President Emmanuel Macron has drawn fire from the left and from the right after the northern city of Lille lost out in the race for the European Medicines Agency to Amsterdam. The socialist mayor of Lille, Martine Aubry, and the conservative president of the Oud France region where Lille is located both took to Twitter to vent their frustration. You can see Xavier Bertrand here tweeted in both English and French. He said, if Emmanuel Macron had fully supported our bid, we weren't guaranteed to win. But without his support, we were sure to lose. He also said Macron has chosen finance over health. This as Paris won the race to take the European Banking Authority. Unsurprisingly, the mayor of Paris, Anne Hidalgo, was thrilled, calling it a collective victory. Now, both the European Medicines Agency and the European Banking Authority are currently located in London. Their change of location is seen as one of the first concrete signs of Brexit. And finally, Health Minister Agnès Buzyn has once again raised eyebrows for a controversial comment. According to Le Figaro, during an interview with journalists, Buzyn said the government wasn't going to hand out Chanel frames to everyone. What she was commenting on was one of Macron's campaign promises to fully reimburse glasses. A few days before, she had been in the spotlight after suggesting French filmmakers stop showing people smoking in their films. Former First Lady Valérie Trierweiler poked fun at the minister with this tweet. You can see her with some sunglasses here. She says, my new Chanel glasses, my cigarette and my cinema. That's all we have time for this week. Thanks for watching. We'll leave you with some images of President Macron this week when he consulted with the leaders of France's main political parties ahead of the 2019 European elections. We'll see you next time on The Political Brief. France 24, c'est la richesse de la diversité culturelle mondiale avec un réseau de correspondants à travers la planète. Africa on France 24 is about its people and their stories.